Hey everyone, it's Haley here, and today we'll be continuing our series in the Smith Wigglesworth book, um, the complete collection of his life teachings. So we will actually pick up where we left off last time on page 377. So it says, One day when I came home from an open air meeting at 11 o'clock, I found that my wife was out. I asked, where is she? I was told that she was down at Mitchell's. I had seen Mitchell that day and knew that he was at the point of death. Uh oh. I knew that it was impossible for him to survive the day unless the Lord undertook. There are many who let down in sickness and who, don't do, who do not take hold of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ that is provided for them. I was taken to see the woman, a woman who was dying and said to her, how are things with you? She answered, I have faith, I believe. I said, you know that you have not faith. You know that you are dying. It is not faith that you have, it is language. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. There is a difference between language and faith. I saw that she was in the hands of the devil. There was no possibility of life until he was removed from the premises. Yeah, until the devil was removed, right. I hate the devil. And I laid hold of the woman and shouted, Come out, you devil of death. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. So here is a typical um, Smith Wigglesworth move is what I'll call it. <laughs> He's known for being quite unconventional in his way of doing things. And so here's a perfect example. So he said, I he, Come out, you devil of death. I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. In one minute, she stood on her feet in victory. Okay, wow, <laughs> that was fast, one minute. But to return to the case of Brother Mitchell, I hurried down to the house, and as I got near, I heard terrible screams. I knew that something had happened. I passed Mrs. Mitchell on the staircase and asked, what is up? She replied, he's gone, he's gone. I just passed her and went into the room, and immediately I saw that Mitchell had gone. I could not understand it, but I began to pray. My wife was always afraid that I would go too far. Uh -oh. And she laid hold of me and said, Don't, Dad. Don't you see that he is dead? I continued to pray and my wife continued to cry out to me, Don't, Dad. Okay, so she must have called him Dad. I don't know. But I continued to praying. I got as far as I could with my own faith. And then God laid hold of me. Oh, it was such a laying hold that I could believe for anything. The faith of the Lord Jesus laid hold of me, and a solid peace came into my heart. I shouted, He lives! He lives! He lives! And he is living today. There is a difference between our faith and the faith of the Lord Jesus. The faith of the Lord Jesus is needed. We must change faith from time to time. Your faith may get to a place where it wavers. Okay, let's pause for a second. Yeah, so we are told that it is unwavering faith that gets the job done. It is unwavering faith that sees results. So whatever it takes to get you to the point where your faith is not wavering, that is what you need to do to see the end result. So for him, uh, it doesn't really say how long he was here, but it could have been 45 minutes, could have been an hour. I, I don't know. It could have been several hours, but however long it takes you to get to that faith where you are, you know that you know that you know, you know that you're not wavering. That is what you need to do. A lot of people, um, you know, it, it's very helpful if you speak in tongues. It's very helpful to listen to worship music, to um, meditate, to really stir yourself up. So whatever you have to do to stir yourself up, to get to the place of unwavering faith, that is what you need to be doing all the time, daily, um, def daily, all the time, especially if you're in a dire situation. Uh, you should set some, some, sa some time aside to um, stir yourself up. So if you guys want to let down in the comments what you personally do to stir yourself up in faith, I would be very curious to hear that. So let's um, continue. We're on page 378. And it says, okay, so there is a difference between our faith and the faith of the Lord Jesus. The faith of the Lord Jesus is needed. We must change faith from time to time. Your faith may get to a place where it wavers. The faith of Christ never wavers, right? When you have the, that faith, the thing is finished. When you have that faith, you will never look at things as they are. You will see things of nature give way to the things of the spirit. 
You will see the temporal swallowed up in the eternal. Yeah, exactly. And we'll just continue here on page 378. It says, I was at a camp meeting in Casadero, California, about eight years ago, and a remarkable thing happened. A man came there who was stone deaf. Uh Uh-oh. I prayed for him, and I knew that God had healed him. Then came the test. He would always move his chair up to the platform, and every time I got up to speak, he would get up as close as he could and strain his ears to catch what I had to say. The devil said, it isn't done. I declared, it is done. This went on for three weeks, and then the manifestation came, and he could hear distinctly, 60 yards away. Awesome. When his ears were opened, he thought it was so great that he had to stop the meeting and tell everybody about it. That's really sweet. I met him in Oakland recently, and he was hearing perfectly. Okay, I love that, because it shows that, he, you know, there was a testimony, and the prayer got answered, and they saw the manifestation right there, and then he saw that him in the future, and he was still hearing perfectly. That's super encouraging. That's really awesome. And also, if you guys want to put down in the comments what your craziest uh, answer to prayer has been, uh, again, I'd be curious to hear that, too. So we'll continue. As we remain steadfast and unmovable on the ground of faith, we shall see what we believe or in perfect manifestation. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to stand and keep standing, keep pushing forward until we see the full results and the full manifestation of whatever we're praying for. Um, As always, um, you know, keep up the relationship with God every day, day in and day out. Read the word, feed on the word, meditate on the word, uh, keep your prayer life occupied, and definitely be showing love towards everyone because, you know, not everybody understands the fullness of the gospel message. And so we are the light bearers through the Holy Spirit. So we always want to be shining our light everywhere we go. So I encourage you all to not just work on your own faith in your private time with God, but be shining that light to to your communities, to your um, family members, to just anyone you see on the street. You always want to be shining that light. I encourage you all to go out and pray for people, lay hands on them and see them um, set free from illness, just like we see Smith did here. It doesn't have, you don't have to be someone special. You know, um, I'm just some random girl here and I know that I really enjoy going out at any point Uh, a lot of times in like supermarkets or if I'm out and about and I see someone that's sick I will ask them if I can pray for them and then I take the opportunity when they say yes to go ahead and pray and share the gospel with them and I've just seen some amazing things and um, you know the Lord does tell us to do that he says preach the gospel to every creature and then he also says in Mark, Mark 16 17 and 18 Um, Things like believers will lay hands on the sick and they recover. So if any of you have any questions, let them down below in the comments. And if you have any testimonies, please share those as well. And be encouraged today. And I just pray blessings over each of you in our Lord Jesus Christ's name. And as always, faith is a muscle. So go ahead and use it. Make those faith muscles strong. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time.